before you guys got. You guys have Coors Banquet normally, right? Yeah. yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Hey, garage beer this week. I will still wear a banquet hat. <laughs> <laughs> I will still wear it. That's fine. All right. I'll get the game. It's up. ironic. It's ironic. Does this work? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. For it's me. like a banquet hat when all you've got in your fridge is garage beer. What? Well, it's I'm ironic. A, I don't <laughs> think that's that. <laughs> a, well, nothing in that song is actually ironic. It's just all like bad luck. It's like rain. Yeah, it's like that. Rain is ironic. On your wedding day. On your wedding day. That sounds ironic. A free ride if you've already paid. Especially ironic in the era of Uber. Turns out you just really know Vanessa Carl- Carlton. <laughs> Do you have to let it linger? <laughs> you son of a bitch. Hello? It's a little difficult. I just, I just can't believe I didn't even earn a laugh out of it. Nope. I'm filming a podcast right now. Oh, I'm sorry. You're on live. Yeah, you'll be on the internet soon. Oh my god! Love you, bye. Bye. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Who's that? It's my mom. Oh. oh. <laughs> and that's the portion of the show where David's mom calls in. <coughs> Hold all, on, guys. We have a caller. I was going to say all of our moms are going to call in. And, oh, uh, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Kentucky Commons Radio Hour. I am Michael Moeller, uh, here with David Satterley, Meow. John Ronane. <laughs> arf, arf. Is this a thing now? We are filming at Bluegrass Homebrew Supply here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, as always, if, you, uh, if you're if you listening to us on you know Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to podcasts, thank you so, so much for listening. Uh, we do hope that you're subscribing and, and rating and sharing and doing all those things. And uh, for the last month, you've been uh, hearing us harp, harp a little bit about the, the new YouTube channel that we've been promoting. Uh, I hope you're subscribed to us on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see this giant pack of uh, this 15 pack beer that's in front of me right now you can see what it is before I even announce it on the podcast that's that's special and that's worth the subscribe the, the, the subscribe button right there uh, so please like share listen review do all the things that goes a long way it's been fun to see all the people new on YouTube too so everybody who's uh, watching on YouTube and has just found us in the past couple weeks hi I yeah. may have watched a uh, episode nice. last week. Excellent. So. And that voice you're hearing is Zane Smith, the uh, National Director of Sales for Garage Beer yep. uh, in Covington, Kentucky, uh, just right outside Cincinnati. Zane, thank you so much for joining yeah, us Yeah, thanks tonight. for having me. Uh, going forward, actually, Garage Beer's headquarters are going to be in Columbus, Ohio, still getting made in Covington, Kentucky. Though. Nice. That's a, that, that is good information, actually. Yeah. And, and you're wearing a, a Columbus Crew uh, shirt, I think, right now. If you want to see that, you can watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're subscribing on Louisville Ale Trail. Um. <laughs> yeah, they are uh, a partner of ours uh, up in Columbus, and so they support us. So, uh, you know, I figured... I have literally like 30 soccer jerseys in my closet, so might as well wear the one that supports us. Might as well. What, uh, what, what episode did you watch on YouTube? Uh, the Cider One Pivot. Oh, oh yeah. Pivot Cider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great episode. Any, yeah. any takeaways from that one? Uh, it looked fun. It looked like you guys were having some uh, I wasn't part of that one. I, was, I had COVID that yeah, day. Yeah, you, you were not there. It looked like you guys were having some uh, interesting That's ciders. why we were having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're, you were traveling to Juno that week. Well, either that or I was sick in Juno. Oh, yeah. One. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to start the same the, the, the show the same way we always start the show. Uh, David brought us a beer today to share. David, what is uh, that beer that you have for us? So I texted Zane a little bit earlier today, and I was like, homie, what are your favorite beer styles? And he, he gave me a few, uh, but the most uh, promising was Oktoberfest. All right. <laughs> so now <laughs> in, in box the, season, in yeah. the right month of May, <laughs> I found an Oktoberfest. <laughs> um, this is Oktoberfest Mertzen by Half Day Brewing. They are out of Lincolnshire, Illinois. I received this from a friend of mine. Shout out Matthew Miller. Um, so let's get this poured up and then I'll yeah. talk a little bit. Where is Lincolnshire? Yeah. So. I think it's up near Chicago. Okay. Yeah, Chicago, Chicago, correct. Chicago suburb. Land. Yeah. Well, well, they all say you're supposed to brew your Oktoberfests when you're drinking your box and vice versa. So we're just kind of <laughs> flipping the script on that a little bit. So this is from Half Day Brewing. Um, 
The hmm? Potawatomi Indians were the first settlers in what is now known as Lincolnshire. So contrary to popular belief, uh, Half Day was not named because it's a half day's journey from Chicago. Uh, the town's true name was Hafta in honor of Chief Aptas- Aptakisik. Oh, yeah, we got you. <laughs> whose name means son at Meridian or Half Day. Okay. So nice. Thank you, Half Day. Thank you, Half Day. It smells nice and malty. I'm sure it's fine, actually. Yeah, I mean, Oktoberfest typically actually a little bit more caramel ish. coming out than it might otherwise be. Feels like it's lost a touch of car, but not a ton. And I also know how David Satterley pours. Yeah, definitely got that uh, caramel mm-hmm. caramel note. It's a little sweeter. It's yeah, on the sweeter side. Lightly oxidized, but I mean, for what, almost eight, nine months? Yeah, well, the intention was to drink an old <laughs> Oktoberfest, so I think we uh, knocked the ball out of the park on that. No, one. the intention was to cater to the guests. Yeah, oh, okay, is there okay, is okay. there like a package date or a Best Buy date or something? It was probably, what, brewed in July or can bottom? Yeah, it just says a lot. 610. Uh, so uh, well, it does uh, have 22 on it, which makes me think sure. it was last year. Well, yeah. Just from previous knowledge, uh, you know, the Oktoberfest that I had been a part of in the past, they brewed them about 30 or 40 days out. Uh, so if you're talking shipping 1st of July, they're brewing that middle of May. Right now. Or yeah. Right now. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, well, that was a that was a fun beer, but not as fun as garage beer. Um, Zane, uh, we want to hear more about garage beer and, and how that brand kind of came to be. But first, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into this space? Yeah. So as a lot of us in the industry kind of started, we kind of started our beer journey of just trying new things at the grocery store, things like that. Um, I my first job out of college, I actually was a collegiate tennis coach at Cornell University up in Ithaca, New York. Um, you went to Cornell. <laughs> yeah, ever heard of it? Uh, <laughs> Nelly's name is Cornell. <laughs> it's true. Um, but uh, with that, uh, there was a lot of local beer up in Ithaca. They have uh, even some hop farms up there. So when I had some time off, I got to go and, and visit those. Uh, and then when traveling up and down the East Coast in the Ivy League, uh, when I wasn't coaching, there were some nights to where I just had by myself out on the town a little bit. Uh, you know, I would go over to the local watering hole and try some different craft beer. And that's really how I got into it. Um, After that, I moved to Louisville. Uh, I actually worked for Dean Foods Company for a couple of years. Uh, Like milk? Yep. Rest in peace. They are no longer uh, Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. I blame Terry Miners. (laughs) (laughs) That's a a commercial that I don't remember that well. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, he did those Jenny's Diner commercials too, and they're not around anymore. Anyway, the Terry Miners curse. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But uh, after that, um, again, I was into the the local craft beer scene. I had a good friend from high school who was actually the chief marketing officer at Braxton Brewing Company. They had a position opening uh, and just started working for Braxton uh, in 2017. Nice. I was just the rep on the street here in Louisville uh, for a couple of years. And then throughout the years, I was Louisville. I was Tennessee. I was half of Kentucky. I was all of Kentucky. I was grocery uh, chain manager. You know what I mean? Just all over the place. Um, and then recently how uh, Garage Beer came to be. Garage Beer first came out from Braxton in like 2016. Um, and it slowly, steadily increased sales. And then right before COVID kind of happened, it really took off. Um, and so I kind of just helped build that brand uh, from the ground, ground up. Um, and then this past summer... Um, garage beer actually became under new ownership, uh, from a group of investors who have a history in consumer goods. Uh, the CEO of the company, uh, was, had his own business. That was a sports nutrition gummy supplement type of company. He sold that. Uh, I was really into light beer. Uh, had a mutual friend on the board of Braxton. That's how they became hooked up. Um, and then another one of the people on our board or uh, on the garage beer team uh, was an old platform guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's been working for platform through the acquisition with Anheuser Busch, um, and now uh, is on the garage beer team. So just a little background of me, and then also kind of how garage beer is 
is now. So it's still getting brewed by Braxton, still made in Covington, Kentucky. Uh, they still, Braxton still has part ownership in garage beer as That's well. Awesome. So it's, it's sort of a partnership to really just try to elevate garage beer and have it become a bigger thing than it already is. So a few, a few weeks back, we had uh, Sam Cruz on the podcast of Against mm-hmm. the Grain. And one of the things we were talking about with him that stuck out in my mind, and this was right around the time that Garage Beer, what you know, what you guys were doing was starting to come onto my radar. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, one of the points that he made was as a craft brewery, you know, kind of like um, can do what you can do. And we, we all gain market share. Like we just talked about last week or so ago about like the new ranking of the top, you know, 30 craft beer producers or whatever. Those numbers still don't even begin to touch the numbers right. of AB Bev or Miller mm-hmm. Coors. Um, or whatnot. And one of the points he was making is when you, when you go after that demographic, you kind of just feel like you're going to just kind of start hitting your head against the wall at some Mm -hmm. point because they have so much shelf space. They have so much like, uh, power with the distribution model and just, you know, boots on the ground with reps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe in form of a question, you know, uh, you guys have been brewing this beer for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when the idea or how the idea kind of got started? You know, other than the people involved kind of coming around that it was Uh, going to become its own thing. The idea of garage beer or how it became its own thing. So, and just how you decided to kind of create that separation with the intention, I'm assuming of kind of going after that side of the market that just likes like drinkable, crushable, you know, beer. Yeah. So garage beer was first visualized by, uh, Evan Rouse, who's founder of Braxton. Uh, he just, brewed out of his garage, wanted to name a beer called Garage Beer. Hell yeah. Uh, some people thought it was... <laughs> Sorry. Spilling Camera stuff. Camera down. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was that Oktoberfest. It just <laughs> went right to your head. Prost. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he started brewing that out of his garage, named it Garage Beer. It's great. Started to take off, right? Um, and then, sorry, what was the other part of the question? How did we decide to... To break it off. Yeah. To was break it, it off. Uh, you know, I part of i was not part of the acquisition group i did like the vision of garage beer and sort of what the goal was to try to make it better bigger um you know sort of my craft beer journey and a lot of craft beer people's journey is like you have that first beer with your dad or your brother or your cousin you know what i mean and it's typically a light beer um and then you start dabbling in other things. So you start dabbling in IPAs, sours, uh, stouts, all that stuff. And then it comes back to, okay, now what do I really like to drink? Mm-hmm. I go back to lagers and pilsners, basically, um, and light light beer. Um, and it's now to a point to where I'm a dad. I got two kids. Uh, I have a budget now. Uh, I'm also wanting to be a little bit healthier. Uh, not a hundred percent of the time really being healthy, but, um, trying to be a little bit healthier and I'm wanting to stretch my dollar. Uh, so that's sort of where garage beer fits in and sort of in that light beer space, a lot of us in the millennial generation want something to call our own and not necessarily give our money to Mm -hmm. Anheuser-Busch or, you know, Miller Coors yeah. or um, Constellation. And it so, sounds like topical to shit on big beer companies, especially right now. But there are so many reasons to hate companies like AB Bev or Miller sure. Coors. And hate might be a strong word. And, but, I, and I'm not shitting on them by any means. Yeah. Imagination. I'm just like saying, I want a beer to call my own mm-hmm. that it fits somewhat into that profile that I know is not going to a multinational conglomerate. Yeah, it is still going and supporting people that are brewing the beer in Covington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. It is still supporting my mortgage. I live here in Louisville, so uh, thank you everybody for purchasing <laughs> crotch beer. Um, you know, and then and that's what I like. And then you know, there's a lot of data uh, and trends out there that also sort of point in that direction. Um, you know, I I'd be lying if I didn't say that there's a lot of marketing dollars that are being spent from those big companies and you're trying to find your foothold and where you fit in. Um, but you know, we're trying to do that. We're working behind the scenes on hopefully a breakthrough. Um, not necessarily dropping millions and billions of dollars, but, 
um, hopefully working on some some influencer type stuff. Okay. Yeah, I was going to so ask you if you guys kind of had a plan of how you want to go mm-hmm. up against, you know, those big dollars and stuff. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, right off the bat, honestly, the thing that jumps out about GarageBeard the most to me um, and I'm going to try to avoid gushing too much. But yeah, no, I, I, I got to stop you from gushing because we, we, we've talked a lot about garage beer here. Uh, it's garage. Oh, okay. oh gar- no, I think that's the, the French pronunciation. Garage. Garage beer. Oh, well, we've been talking about this beer and uh, we neglected to even explain what it was. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, in my personal philosophy is that like the product will always speak to itself, but mm-hmm. this is, um, a really nice looking can. Uh, it's clean, simple, um, got this kind of like beige hue to it, garage beer and a stripe, little, uh, garage with a little basketball goal on mm-hmm. it. You know, it's it like something you, your grandpa might've drank. Takes you home. Um, it's 4%, 95 calories comes in a pint size or a 15 pack of 12 ounces 12 ounces yeah you can see uh, right here in the display here uh, i do like the cardboard <laughs> black packaging thank um, you light beer i mean that's that's what it is uh one of my favorite parts about this is it's extremely transparent and that the the back of the label simply reads this is the side of the can where beer brands tell their story but we thought you'd rather just drink beer with your buddies, which <laughs> yeah, is hundred percent true. <laughs> yeah. uh, garage beer is light, refreshing, made of the highest quality ingredients. But what makes it great are the times we get to crack a few with our friends. Keep it light. Cheers. Oh so, yeah, yeah. It's this is a crusher. I mean, it, this beer has come a long way from twenty sixteen. Yes, I, I distinctly remember having it and not being the biggest fan. Yeah. So uh, there has been a slight tweak um, in the liquid. Um, tweaks started happening back during the acquisition of the brand back in August. Um, so actually some of the garage beer that was coming out between August and January had a little bit of a tweak while we tried to find out exactly what it wanted to taste like. Did you just new Belgium fat tire us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, so it, it's still the same color. It's still the same style. Just now with Bino. No, what? Oh, the old the old light lager, that guy who invented the Beano enzyme, he originally invented it to make like lower calorie, crystal clear beer like this. It's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I would talk to the brewer, but okay. I would be willing to bet that that special enzyme in there, it's like the uh, gluto uh, beta amylase enzyme or whatever it There's is. There's always just gets one in the that room. Drying, yeah, <laughs> that drying crispy. It's delicious. Two just, points for Michael and David who agreed that no one would understand that joke. I was like, <laughs> Beano or no Beano? Beano. It's that uh, special enzyme. It's really it, which makes them that freaking good. Because back to you know what you were saying before that, like a lot of people put out light beer like this, and it's tough to go up against the big boys in terms mm-hmm. of marketing dollars. But it's also tough to go up against the big boys in making a beer that crisp and clear and crushable. Like you know, we're in a homebrew store right now, and consistently, yeah, yeah consistently, consistently exactly. Is the hardest people part. ask me all the time, like, hey, like. Uh, I want to get started homebrewing. What's something easy to make? Like Bud Light? And I'm like, no, no, that's the hardest beer in the world to make. The hardest beer in the world to make is, <laughs> you'll take this the right way, hopefully, but it's the one with the least, quote unquote, sure, you flavor. Can't, you can't hide anything. Exactly. Yeah. You can't hide anything. And and Braxton has always been a good lager brewery. Um, and this is no different, yeah. in, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's... It's still a single malt, single hop, uh, Pilsner malt, Magnum hops. Uh, just, yeah, a slight tweak to bring it down. And, you know, it previously back in 2016, it was about 120 calories, eight, nine grams carbs, and just slight tweak to, to bring it down into that, that light, that light mm-hmm. style that people are, are clamoring towards. So, so, what is it like to go from you know that Braxton portfolio of a lot of different mm-hmm. SKUs and a lot of different you know, yeah. styles to basically this garage mm-hmm. beer plus you know I mean there's the lime version too mm-hmm. as well. But what has that been like for you? Uh, I like it uh, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> um, your portfolio, you're just super hyper focused on one thing and one thing only. And honestly, I felt like this is what this beer needed. It needed that super hyper focus. I mean, you look at um, some of these companies. Yes, obviously, like Miller Coors has a huge, vast portfolio, but the main things that they focus on are Miller Lite and Coors Light, and they're super hyper focused. You find it everywhere in every single pack size. Um, and really, I it's 
it gets difficult because yes, you are only focused on one and you can't go to something else. You know, when you're, when you were selling at like a bar or whatever, yeah, you'd bring up and you'd bring like three cans up there and they'd be all three different styles. And you know, you'd get pushed back on one style, but then they'd be like, Oh yeah, that style's nice. We'll go ahead and try that out. And now you kind of have to be pretty super sharp with just that one. And it kind of has to fit in that, portfolio of not just price, not just liquid, but also like marketing materials, Mm -hmm. um, and taste profile, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's just being super hyper-focused on, on one thing. And I, I really like it. Honestly, that's what I've been doing since 2019 is really just focusing on garage beer. So the branding uh, around it is all great too. If you you know, David was reading the can and it's mm -hmm. kitschy and it's fun and it's like whatever, but you guys have a good, like everybody should go follow them on Instagram. You guys have a great Instagram account. Thank you. At drink garage beer. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you get a no from an account, do you just slam it down and say you're wrong and walk away? (laughs) (laughs) That's all. That's all I got. No, no, no. I, 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 I don't do that. I mean, we we do have the lime version, so you know you kind of have a little bit of a backup. which is delicious, by yeah. the way. Yeah, you brought but, one. Should we open it? Yeah, crack it. Yeah, you guys you can it. crack it open. It. I have multiple down in the cooler okay. over here too, yeah, if you want to do it. But um, you know, a beer. lot of a lot of the pushback that you used to get on a craft logger that you do get on craft loggers when you're out in the market is why am I going to pay one hundred and seventy dollars a half barrel, one sixty dollars? You know what I mean? That price point. For this beer, when I can just get, you know, Bud Light, Miller Light, yeah. it's going to sell twice as fast, and it's one hundred and thirty dollars, one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Um, now, you know, we are able to compete uh, with those price points. I mean, you'll go out to your local grocery store. Um, you guys can have some. Of that, but <laughs> yeah, I've got it. multiple. My <laughs> fridge is full at home. <laughs> Trust me. But um, you, you can go out to your local grocery store and compare prices. I mean. A six pack, sixteen ounce can of garage beer is eight ninety nine. Beautiful, which is basically the same price as the big guys. Um, the fifteen pack is sixteen ninety nine. Uh, you go and you look at some of the big guys. You look at some of the imports, uh, like Mexican import lagers. Twelve packs. Oh are yeah, sixteen seventeen. Modelo ain't cheap, man. I'm no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's an import. Though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like we're competing liquid we're competing price we're competing in the the better for you it's just trying to get the word out getting liquid to lips um at this point so well this this lime is zesty yeah the lime is really good the lime definitely has more it's the flavoring that they use is an all-natural flavoring um it is more lime zest for than candied lime yeah um you know a lot of the big limes, big brewery limes that are out there have almost like a sugary candied type of lime. Oh, yeah. They're just using that extract stuff and then they're dosing it with like malic acid. Sure. This um, is the secret. Big lime doesn't want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this one definitely feels more like a I squeezed a lime into my beer. Yes, I completely And agree. it's not overpowering. It's just a hint, which it says with a hint of lime on there. So... Uh, if people are looking for a super lime forward thing, it's not. If you're thinking more of tropical vacation, you're on the beach and you throw a, a lime, maybe some salt. You know, not maybe not a whole lot of salt, but throw a lime in your beer. Uh, that's the taste that I get. I agree. So I'm the, thinking, these guys know, but I'm a big I'm a big fan of like lime zesty. I made um, my first Michelada of the season with one of these lime beers a couple weeks back when I, a week or two ago. Delicious, excellent, yeah. One of the best ones I've nice. had. I think it's the perfect beer for after you've had five regular garage beers. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just switch it up to the well, line. <laughs> you joke, but honestly, that was part of the thought process behind a little bit of the the reformulation, if you will, a little tweak of the liquid was garage beer was great. I could have three of them. Okay, now responsibly, what if I wanted to stay home and have six of them? I probably couldn't previously. Now I feel like I probably could could responsibly yeah responsibly yeah and it's something about that beer when it's like 90 degrees outside and you're doing yard work and you're in your garage and Mm -hmm. like you know maybe your garage doesn't have ac i might be telling a personal story here (laughs) uh maybe a tree fell in your yard and you're chopping wood like all day long for like six hours you pound you drink one of these as a refreshment on the hour you know you're fine you just can keep going drink water in between 
uh, level pure tap, delicious, and then just keep going back to the dang garage beer. It fueled fueled me on many a day so yeah, far. Yeah, so. I pr- appreciate your uh, your support. Yeah, and and that was again some of the thought process behind it too. The our our CEO during COVID times, he and all of the guys in his neighborhood would just be like, "All right, whose garage are we going to hang out with today? Like, where are we going to put up our lawn chairs and hang out in their driveway or in their garage?" Uh, and I think really that's why I fell in love with it. The yeah. name and and the brand and sort of the thought process behind taking it over. So. I completely, I think spot on. Yeah. Well, uh, I think uh, David also explained to you before you came on that we do a little show and tell segment here. Mm-hmm. Uh, one beverage related, one maybe not so beverage related. Sure. Do you want to break out a beverage for us? Uh, so the beverages that I did bring, uh, were garage beer, Perfect. garage beer line. Hell yeah. so, oh my God. Cause you only uh, have one skew. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got uh, two. We got two. I, I did not bring the 19, two ounce, uh, stove pipe for you, unfortunately. Okay. So, but those exist. They exist. Holy God, They're out that. in the wild. Yeah. Um, we also have a mythical 24 pack, uh, of 12 ounce cans oh, as yeah. well. So, um, hoping to get those here in Louisville at some point in time. 30 uh, rack of garage beer or else garage, garage <laughs> beer. You're doing, you're doing the, garage uh, beer. yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the champagne region pronunciation. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, I've got regular garage beer and garage beer line for you guys to taste as far as beers Love are concerned. So, um, if you guys want to, have any more garage beer? You know, we can have... I've got more October. Five yeah. <laughs> That's okay. All right. well, you, if you have another show and tell, you yeah, want to do... What is the other one? Uh, my other show and tell is snacks. Hell I, yeah. I we know um, not eating on camera and eating into the microphone oh, is if probably you're in not good company. the sexiest no. thing in the world. The but, people who listen are uh, used to it at this point. Okay, all right. Um, give me just a second. Let me get those out for you we, guys. Uh, we love a good snack here on the podcast. Uh, I think we broke our eating thing with uh, Scout and Scholar. Were they the first eating episode? Maybe they so. brought a bunch of good stuff for us. And then we've done a couple cheese episodes. Cheese, some hot, most recently some wings. we had we had multiple wing episodes. Kevin Gibson's was still the most like uh, horrendous to go back and listen to. Oh, and just because like you could hear the snot it's running out of all of our sinuses, lip smacking. There might and, still uh, be a little bit of his like fire sauce. Ooh. I brought different options what? because I feel like everyone has a certain All thing. of them. Yeah, I'm yeah, proud. I mean, Pretzels and beer to me, but chips are good too. And honestly, a great snack to go with like light lager yeah. beer. I'll just throw one sure. in the Yeah, we'll, we'll share. This is great. So you're you're breaking out some, some chips and pretzels. This is what you call like a light beer charcuterie. Cheez-Its. Basically, to go with your... Uh, Light domestic lager. Oh, I bet the Cheez Its and the and the oh, garage man. go really well. Okay, so there's also a basket of Cheez Its coming out. So a basket. No uh, basket. I, this is a, <laughs> depends on how you define it, but welcome to Roosters. We have a basket of <laughs> look, it's a technically it's a basket, okay? It identifies as a basket. Um wow. Cheez Its are one of the best snacks in the entire world. Oh yeah. Wow. And the puffy pretzels. All right. Now, do you have a, a recommended uh, pairing to yeah. go with these? I do feel like the cheese that's in the in the lime. Yeah, go yeah. Well. I I don't necessarily have a recommended pairing. I personally just love like a salty, crunchy sort of snack while I'm drinking beer. Heck yeah, hanging out, watching the game. Um, I will say that lately, those pretzel twists have taken over my snack ranking. Okay. Um, they are sort of the Kroger private selection take on dots. But in my opinion, okay. my opinion, it has a little bit more of a spice and oomph behind it, if that makes any sense. I do, I okay. do, I do love some dots. Now, do these pretzels have like a ranch coating? Just they're called original seasoning, which okay. is garlic, onion, salt, pepper. It's a ranch. Oh, yeah, those are delicious. Kind of. That is a damn good snack. Although, it can't hold a candle to Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its are by far the best, like, cracker snack. I'm going to stand that, and I don't care what else anybody thinks. Mm, Cheez-Its pi- are original. I picked up some um, some Frito Honey Barbecue Twists last night for mm-hmm. the first time in a while. Love those things, especially, like, in some chili or something. Yeah, yeah. that is also true. Those go well. I also love the uh, the Snyder's Buffalo Ooh, Wing Breaks yeah. yes. um, flavor. Excuse me? Yeah. What Buffalo Wing flavored pretzels. They're like breaks. Oh. They're like hard pretzels and they're broken up into little chunks. 
I want that. Yeah, you should go get and some. And they just get like covered in whatever coating that they do. Yeah. They have You're, a really good honey mustard one. They have a really good the buffalo. Mm-hmm. I think there's like a mm-hmm. buffalo ranch one that they do or like buffalo blue your, cheese. Your fingers get a little That's like okay. Doritos-y but a with the uh, buffalo <laughs> ones. <laughs> like, <laughs> the like dish finger yeah. washer. My, my go-to snack lately has been the like <laughs> mammoth size uh, jar that you can get of the like uh, peanut butter covered in like salty pretzel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those, those are good. Those oh yeah, are, we've are been good. doing those. The Absolutely, giant, a giant Costco tub of it. Yeah, yeah. you have to go to probably those are Costco good. to get it. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna pronounce this wrong, but a, a snack that I've been falling back on here recently is the Mingua Brothers. Mingua? Beef jerky. Mingua. 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 I always Mingi. I never know how to pronounce it's it. Mingi. Mingi. The Mingi Brothers really beef Mingi? jerky. It's Mingi. I used to okay. work for them. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, it's so good. I was tr- I was crushing the barbecue and the spicy the other day. And it's like you got to shred it apart with your teeth and then you got to like just chew it, chew it, chew it. But it's like it's like meat leather. It's yeah. so good. I guess yeah. leather is meat leather, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. M- Mingy's a, you know, great Kentucky proud product. Yeah. Yeah. Right, at the, right uh, out of uh, Bourbon County, Kentucky, Paris, Kentucky. Also goes good with garage beer. I can there attest from the other Probably, day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, but sort of the the thing that I, you know, with with snacks and beer, and I'm sorry if this brings up just out of wild. Go whatever, for it, but, man. So like you go to a Mexican restaurant, you get chips automatically, right? Uh, I went to Italy this past summer. Anytime that you go and you order a drink, Cheez-Its. you automatically get something. They give you, hmm. they give you chips. They give you pretzels. They give you nuts. Uh, fancy places will actually make you some, some toast with some spread, you know, oh, some tomatoes, like things yeah. like that. But, I know that pre-COVID, like bar snacks kind of used to be a thing. Uh, it used to be a really big thing back in like the 80s and 90s. Um, I remember going to a restaurant with my parents on the way home from hockey practice growing up that they just hand out a thing of popcorn. You know, nice. here's popcorn for your table. Yeah, dry roasted peanuts used to always be like yeah. the cliche, like bar food. Texas and salty as shit. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, why don't more places nowadays just bring you a small thing of chips yeah. if you're going out and just just ordering drinks? I understand if you're ordering dinner. Like, yeah, you're going to sit down and have, have dinner with your drinks and all that stuff. But if you're just wanting to go out and have drinks with a friend, like, why not if someone could just maybe charge 50 cents more a beverage or something like that, actually bring out a thing of chips instead of just leaving, you know, peanuts or whatever it is out on the table? Um I think it would go a long way. I feel like people would hang out a little bit longer, yep. maybe buy a couple more drinks. Um, if, I, if I walked into charging. a bar and they served me a bowl of Chex Mix, mm-hmm. I would buy five more beers. <laughs> it makes you thirsty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty, Jerry. <laughs> yep. Like it's the uh, tail no, of it's, the time. It's a thing. And, and you know, I, you know, there was a reason why that the old eight ball or Braxton Labs had that popcorn machine there and you could go out and get your scoop it yourself and just sit down and have a beer. And before you know it, you've had two or three beers yeah. because you're really thirsty. And it's good on the other side too. Like obviously, you know, eating salty food like keeps you sipping and maybe you'll order that second beer. But on the other hand, if you've had like three or four beers and you're kind of like, okay, you can also just like order a water, munch on some yeah. like peanuts yeah, and kind of taper yourself off to like. Yeah. So my, my thing is, is like, yeah, don't just have a thing of snacks sitting out on the table and well, people have been putting their hands out there and going, you know what I mean, like when you show up. But like, yeah, you know, you have a thing of, you know, call it Chex Mix or pretzels or whatever, pour it into a bowl, bring it out to the table, and every table gets a fresh fresh bowl of snacks every yeah. single time. So. Yeah. Mm. There there was a bar in Louisville, uh, Rip, um, Louis the Ton. Mm. Okay. And they used to do complimentary duck fat popcorn. Uh, shout out Tommy Johns, who's mm-hmm. on the show before, who helped get that joint up and running. Um, but that was awesome because it was yeah. just popcorn and like something good. Yeah. Really good. And obviously inexpensive. And yeah. It, it meant a lot to just go and get your little popcorn, little tray. Yeah. I'm sure they had regulars too that were like, I know that I'm going to have yeah. popcorn and a beer. You want to go have popcorn and a beer with me? That was me. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were the regular. <laughs> I was the regular. So I'm seeing a future. We'll edit this part out. So like you can get all the credit for it, but I'm seeing a future where a garage beer has become the number one best selling beer in the nation. Um, and then you guys <laughs> franchise the brand off into like, like a garage charcuterie. Sure. And it's actually just like really, really good snacks, but yeah. you, you can sell a little rack. People can hang up the rack in their garage next to their beer fridge, 
have their garage beer, have their garage snacks. Yep. I'm, it's a garage yep. world. I was going to say, in, in, in later this year... <laughs> we're, uh, we're trademarking that, by the way. It's a garage world. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, don't send that to your marketing <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Don't worry about Come that. Come on. No, 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 no. no, but uh, uh, later this year uh, in Columbus, uh, we will be having a garage beer space opening yeah. up. Um, it'll look just like a look and feel just like a garage. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, probably have some stuff that you have up here, you know, like, uh, Hey, girl. let us know on opening day. We'll yeah. bring up the homebrew <laughs> rig. We'll do a garage brew somewhere behind the building and we will just yeah. do a live podcast and yeah. drink the heck out of garage yeah. beer. Yeah. So it's, it's going to look and feel just like that full with like golf simulator. It's just, you know, thinking of like the, the man cave mm-hmm. garage, if you will. So, will you have pickleball? I heard that's hot right now. <laughs> I still don't uh, really know what that even is. Uh, there are no plans for pickleball uh, as mm. of this moment. What about Better tennis? Get on it. Uh, no plans for tennis as of this moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I see you're wearing a Western and Southern uh, shirt. It is a tournament that I visited frequently as a kid growing up so it's, it's a great one uh before we talk about that zane how, how's your stomach right now we just had some snacks yeah. and some beer how's your stomach doing say it's, it's bad <laughs> it's it's good because of the garage beer yeah. but i am also you're a feeling, full you're i'm a little, a little full, right? full and yeah. could use a little bit of uh some relief so th- th- i'm glad you said that yeah. because it just so <laughs> happens zane that we have underberg here today and underberg after you have your beer and you, after you have your snacks What's and, underberg, Michael? and if you just want to keep going you can just take a little sip of this little bottle yeah i definitely want to keep going and and you can just drink it and it relieves you. It makes you feel bright and alert. Uh, Underberg, it's made in Germany, uh, so you know it's good. All the bitters that you want. Oh, you have two already? Yep, we got oh, one sorry. right here. There we go. Um, so 45 degree angle. I think you've said before that you've done this before, but it's been a minute. I, it's 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 been a minute. Honestly, um, it's been probably a decade if I'm aging myself. Wow. But uh, this is honestly the first time that I've been out of my house to recreationally <laughs> have a beer and just chill Hell yeah! Uh, in a long time. I had, wow. a kid, had a kid during COVID. Yeah, congrats. Just man. had another kid uh, a month ago. So you guys are busy. I've been uh, I've been at home for a while. So I'm I'm thankful that I could have a night out and just drink some beers. Well, I'm, so, gl- I'm glad you're here joining us. We're yeah. all about community here, especially community uh, amongst, you know, beer snacks in Underberg. So we just chug this? So yeah, yeah. you just all right. do it all at once, 45 degree angle. Uh, we Cheers. all have our different methods, but you know, you're going to feel better afterwards. Garage beer and Berg and Cheez Its is my new go. like favorite snack. Combo. You feel the warmth just going down your throat. You should make like a five or six office. dollar special about that. You know, so yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so uh, you, you'll be happy to know, and maybe this is some, like some some insider knowledge that Underberg doesn't really want out. Apologies in advance, Patrick, but uh, Underberg's USA presence is actually headquartered out of Columbus, Ohio. Hmm. So you you, really? you you two should be friends sometime. We should definitely hook yeah, up. Yeah, hook up and yeah. be like, hey, yeah, Underberg Garage Beer, let's let's do something cool together. Yeah, and then send uh that th- those guys in Louisville, you know, a lot of product because they're really <laughs> cool and we love that they love us. Yeah, uh, we, and and it's good. But we now, can work something out. Uh, Underberg, thank you so much for always sponsoring yes, the show. You, uh, we we appreciate you. We we love the Berg breaks. Um, and uh, just like we have the Berg breaks, sometimes you get a break in tennis, uh, as we're talking about. Uh, you know, Western Southern, that was a great mm-hmm. uh, tournament in, in Mason, right outside of Cincinnati there. Yep. Uh, I used to, I, well, uh, for one summer, I was a player security. Okay. Yeah, I worked nice. in player security. I got to hang out with uh, Djokovic, Federer, Serena Williams, like, yeah. pushed me. It was really awkward and weird, <laughs> and I got her in trouble. Uh, <laughs> she got I would not want trouble. to yeah. get on her wrong side. No, it was, it was bad. Uh, yeah. Warinka, uh, yeah. Maria Sharapo- Sharapova. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, Who was the really angry tennis guy? That everybody used to always like meme on McEnroe. McEnroe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm glad you never had a run in with him. I wish I did. That dude's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like cameo in Big Daddy, where he's uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or no, not Big Daddy in uh... it's some movie. He just like punches the dude. Oh man, Mr. Deeds. Oh yeah, it's Mr. Right, yeah. Deeds. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Where they're out on the town, he's the throwing a beer. Adam Sandler yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, man, uh, I I didn't know that was that's cool. Um, you know, tennis is something that runs in my family. Um, you know, my my cousin as the coach advisor, if you will, 
um, of Rajiv Ram, who's like number one, number two in the world cool. in doubles. Um, so uh, a couple of years ago before COVID, uh, we were able to go to the Women's World Cup in Wimbledon, sort of in the same oh, wow. like two week time span. Um, and we got to go to Wimbledon and like watch spend the whole day there. Oh, so I, so I, I assume as a, as a coach and like you're coaching the Ivy League, I'm going off track. No, you're fine. I'm curious. Go. I, I never, I never had the opportunity to ever to ever play on on grass. Mm -hmm. Did you? I assume. No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. It's it's expensive. Uh, there's not a whole lot of grass courts. Definitely around. not in the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple, but the upkeep of them is just so difficult, and that's why it's so expensive. Um, I, I wish that I would have been able to i don't know if you can tell by my figure but i was not the fastest person <laughs> out on the court uh more of a, a a big server and using some brains and some some slice which the grass keeps that ball down a little mm -hmm. lower so i've so never played would, tennis on grass that sounds impossible to get like a good bounce or to get a good like they they brought the balls back back before they changed them there's inside tennis but they changed the ball so that it would bounce more huh okay so that way the points would last longer but back before that they brought the balls back over Rajiv did when he was playing singles and he would drop the ball like here and the ball would maybe go up to his ankle wow oh, gosh. you know what I mean and it's like that thing was so heavy and it like strain your arm and it's just yeah it was it was nuts to to see that stuff do they still wear tennis shoes or are they cleats in the grass? <laughs> <laughs> they, they do have special shoes. How that, often? That they have to wear for a grass. Because figured. if they wear normal ones, it tears it up too much. Well, so gra grass aside on a, on a hard yeah. court, how often do you have to change out your shoes when you're like playing, playing? Playing, playing? Every month. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's oh a lot. my gosh. Yeah. It was to a point to where like all of these, uh, I mean, thankfully, uh, shout out Ball State, uh, went to college, played tennis there. Um, they had uh, a great equipment room manager and he would, you know, have those shoes and uh, ready to go. But anytime that they were worn down, they technically had a six month sole, like outsole warranty from the time that you put them on. So it's like every time that your shoe would run down, you have to get a new one. It's Jeez, just like, this, here's another pair of shoes. This is a little gross, <laughs> but after the, after the Western and Southern tournament that I worked, I probably came home with four or five used pairs of shoes mm -hmm. that I just found yeah. lying around in the men's locker mm -hmm. room. I was like, these fit me. They're also only, they've only been used like for a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th I mean, there was, there were some, uh, some players in like the eighties and nineties that would change shoes during sets. Like, wow. In between sets, they'd get a new pair of shoes out. I think that's a little absurd, but some of your, your top people do have a brand new pair of shoes for every match. That's crazy. So yeah. tennis is a racket. To sell shoes. It's, it's a racket. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you there take you those shoes home and just like. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's like a weird way <laughs> to start like your better. <laughs> Man, I, I wish I, I, I knew specifically at least where one pair came from. And it was uh, one of the Canadian men's. And I, I don't even remember who it was at this point. But I was just like, for like the, the next month after I came back home, I was like lamely bragging to people. <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at these shoes. It's on brand. <laughs> They're like, they were like these very light, like very bright lime green looking shoes. And I was just like, you like them? What's cool. up? <laughs> like so and so em. wore them last week at a uh, Western Southern against so and so. Yeah, it's like, a weird <laughs> brag, Michael. It's a weird brag. <laughs> you have a drink, Bailey's from a tennis shoe. Yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> some old Greg vibes going for sure there. So I definitely knew that you were a tennis person, uh, having known you for several years. Um, so I put together um, a little segment that we can do here. Sure. Um, I know everyone's heard of beer pong, tried and true, um, but I don't think anybody's really heard of beer tennis. So, today, I'm going to name a beer style, and you and Michael are going to volley back and forth. So, I'll give you a style, and you name a beer from that style. Ooh. Okay, I have to say, this sounds like a hard game. Like, like regional, <laughs> national, no, no, no. anything? No, we're open. Okay. I was going to say, my, uh, uh, my brain has been solely into... Uh, Loggers uh, recently, <laughs> so some, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll some pitch of in this help uh, might uh, we'll pitch in and might help. not I mean, go my, very well. So my memory recall is shit now. So I mean, yeah. we can yeah, we we can do doubles too. So David, if you think we're not any, doing doubles, no, uh, doubles. You, just, you jump <laughs> in. I hate, I hate doubles. I'm running the game. How would I? <laughs> we, can well, do, we can do Australian doubles. I'm good. Um, so I'm gonna name a beer style, and 
you're going to volley it back and forth until one of you is either wrong, which would be hilarious, or you've I, run out of ideas. I can guarantee you that I will probably be wrong. Okay. I'm, I'm here to help. Okay. We don't want you to help. All right. Starting serve to Michael. Amber Ale. Cold ass beer. Fat tire. We'll count it. We'll count it. Yeah, that counts. Does it say Amber Ale on the package anymore? It's still an Amber Ale. Okay. Sure, whatever. Uh, <laughs> fine. Uh, Bell's Amber. Hoppy Amber from Mad Tree? Yep. Okay. As long as you cite the brewery, we're going to we're gonna count it. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Pilot uh, from Atrium Amber? I know that uh, Leah does Atomic Amber. Thanks, John. Atomic Amber? <laughs> <laughs> from Apocalypse Brew Works. <laughs> from Apocalypse Brew Works? I'm calling shenanigans on that no, one. No, that <laughs> we're Australian doubles. <laughs> no, 15 love, Michael. Thank uh, you. I was going to say, you want me to say Michelob Ultra Amber Max? Yeah, that counts. I, I'm giving it a count. Okay, fine. Because uh, I was actually kind of struggling to think more. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I know that Leah at Apocalypse makes uh, Atomic Amber. Uh, atomic Amber from Apocalypse. Um, Wessex Amber Ale. Yeah, they do make a good one. Mm. Yep. Uh, uh, Braxton Brewing Amber Ale. I'm going to have to assume you're right. I don't know if I've had that one. Uh, Is it, can you qualify that? I think that? they have one. I know they have an Amber Lager. Fault one. Uh, isn't that that I think, no I think technically that beer name is was horsepower and it was an amber ale that they had at uh that's obviously that's, that's what he meant yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 No, okay we're calling it we're calling it we're calling <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I will gladly give that one to you so. <laughs> no 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 we're, we're getting the points no, that's in. you that's okay. you okay. Okay. if you get it wrong it don't count and sure. I, I will say amber is a tough category to start on but you know you guys you guys get a good a good job respectable tried are you done yeah okay <laughs> Zane serving, fifteen love, IPA, uh, Tropic Flare by Braxton, Alupa Holsapel, West Six IPA, um, Channel Six IPA from West Six, <laughs> <laughs> it counts, uh, double Dutch, sure, um, Truth, yep, Channel Five IPA, Michael. From West Six. <laughs> Can we just say channel one through four and just get it out of the way? You are wearing out those sneakers, okay. my friend. Nailed it. Nailed it. One through four. Oh, yeah. So you just got that. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, Wait, I think you just eliminated all the channels with that, too. So we can't just keep volleying right. that. That's okay. I'll say sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, John. Uh, uh, Louisville uh, against the grain. What, what is that? I think that's Louisville. a juicy pale ale. That's a pale ale. Oh. It's two faults for Michael. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah, all right. right. Citra ass down. Oh, oh, oh he's doubling right. down. Okay. Okay. That's points to Zane. Yeah. If you, I think he's being nice. I think he's. M- no, forgetful. I'm actually. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> struggling. Yeah, for sure. All right. 30 to Zane. Um, do you want to serve or do you want to pass it to Michael? Um, Michael can go first. I think I might crack open another one if that's okay. Yeah. Me too. Thanks. Zero serving 30. Stout. Mm. Stout. Uh, 35K from against the grain. 70K. <laughs> from who? <laughs> from against the grain. Uh, uh, dark Charge from Braxton. Dead Blow from Braxton. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> you got it. Um. Think of all those beers in your fridge that you haven't drank yeah, yet. Yeah, I know. There are There's so, so many, many of them. And they're all stouts because no one actually likes stout that much. <laughs> so many of them. I don't have drink one at them Christmas, at one at Thanksgiving, yes. and uh, after that. Al- Alpha Claws from Three Floyds. Is that a stout? I would call that a spice ale personally. A Christmas stout. All right. I'll uh, Okay. We'll, we'll slide. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Bourbon County. There you go. Mm. Do I need to state the brewery? Or no. You can just say, uh, yeah. I nix all Bourbon County, so you can't come back and be like, 2014 <laughs> Bourbon County Vanilla. I think that's just the brand. I think, yeah. 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 Okay. Fair enough. Uh, 
you know, that was a lob and I missed it. So. All right. Conceding. I mean, Narwhal. I mean, come on. Like the, the West Six. What is their stout called? Cocoa. Well, there's a there's cocoa a border. Snake they did that. Yeah, yeah. Snake, snake Cake does the big one. All the ones from uh, Ethereal, they do mm, a lot yeah. of them. Baba Yaga. Anyway, I'm, I'm uh, doing that. coffee style. Isn't there a thing or... in tennis where people yell at you from the sidelines and be like, come on, you're a bum. No, they actually tell you you can't yell. Oh, okay. Well, they're, we can't do really that in mean. this game either. Well, we, we can do it in beer tennis. You should we go to a, heckle te- you guys. a college tennis match and yeah. see how uh, lively this can be. Lots of heckling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for match point. Yeah. Oktoberfest. Ooh. To who? Yeah, who serves it? Well, Michael's under, so we're going to give it to That's him. fine. Yeah, go <laughs> Sam it. Adams. Mm-hmm. Uh, October Fuel from Braxton. Yep. Uh, the, the, the half day bullshit that we just had. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, half day. Said with love. Um, said with love. Uh, West Six Donka Chain. Yep. The Schlafly Oktoberfest. Yep. Uh, Franz from Rheingeist. Yep. Yeah. Um, Bell's Oktoberfest. <laughs> no, I'm just going to get it. So I'm sure everybody does one. Okay. Founders Oktoberfest. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, that's that's where I was going. Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest. Uh, Great Lakes Oktoberfest. Uh, Oompa, Gravely. Uh, I'll tap out. Oh, okay. Come on. <laughs> no, nobody named a single European. I was like, Burger, like Weinstoffer, yeah, Akra, okay. I don't care. Hacker Shore, yeah, come on, guys. I love it. I mean, Einger, I <laughs> don't care. It's okay. you, you sound like you want to play, David. <laughs> no, I made the game. You can jump in. No. All right. We're still at match point. Mm-hmm. Zane serving pale ale. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. If that wasn't the first one, I was going to be like, what? Uh, uh, Louisville from against the... <laughs> I'll allow it. Uh, oh, man. I, I Again, it's not a style that I drink very often, so I am... Um, 420. Is that a Pale Ale no, or yeah, is that an for, IPA? Uh, Ooh, I think it's a pale ale. Sweetwater, uh, 420. That's a pale ale. P- Penny Ryle? Oh, there you go. Damn it. <laughs> that was mine. <sighs> um, uh, Atrium pale ale. <laughs> just, just generic? Yeah. <laughs> Braxton Labs pale ale. <laughs> yeah. Are we counting the agents? <laughs> <generic? laughs> I, I, I guess I got away with that one. <laughs> Do they have one just called pale ale? No. no. Oh, then no, we're not counting that. Is there something called returning a bad serve or something? Like if you play it, does it count? Just an unforced error. Un- yeah. Well, so many, well, so many forced errors for me though. So it's oh. a hard game when you're on the spot. Like my brain was racking and I wasn't even in the competition. It is a hard game. Yeah. But with that, we conclude the first ever beer tennis. Um, championship. Yay. Just really tennis just clap. One, one game. <laughs> one match. <laughs> I, I didn't want to break we're anyone's not, brain if we went another two rounds. All right, David, me mind. and you. Pilsner, go. Urkel. Uh, garage beer. Is that a Pilsner or a lager? It's technically a premium lager. All right. Well, uh, Budweiser. It's also a lager. No, it's a premium Pils. It says no, Pilsner it's on the can. It's a Miller Lite. Yeah, Miller Lite. Bitburger. Uh, Einger Sprockets. Uh, is a beer? No, uh, retitled. They don't make that anymore. It doesn't matter. It's a beer that exists. <laughs> Einger. You already said that. I said that. No, you didn't. Uh, Vice Stefan. Um, Meatball. Uh, Victory Prima Pills. Oh, wait, no, that's a cold IPA. Oh, no, wait. Uh, yeah, Prima Pills. Check Pills from Atrium. Uh, what's their cold IPA called? <coughs> what? I was going to name that one as a as a Pilsner. Anyway. All I right. Won. David won. won. I won. <laughs> it's a fun game. We recommend playing it at home with your friends. <laughs> 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 the thing to do while you're drinking. Your beer beer. Yeah. For yeah. kids. <laughs> Make sure you have a third person to yell out things. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it more fun. 
All right. Well, speaking of uh, pretentious European loggers and all things pretentious European, since we've been talking about tennis and uh, David's been pronouncing it garage beer, which we think is the French pronunciation. Garage. Garage beer. Uh, there was some fun national beer news this week, and I think this maybe came across your all's radar, but uh, we, we can have a quick discussion on it and see if we have any hot takes. Uh, maybe you guys saw this story, but the Port Authority, uh, which I actually didn't realize this detail, of Belgium, uh, seized and destroyed more than 2,000 cans of Miller High Life as it came into port. It's all a very confusing story, but essentially it comes down to the fact that the special, you know how France does this thing that it's only champagne if it's made in the Champagne region mm-hmm. of like, uh, French. yeah, the whatever they're valley. They're huge into it. Yes. And it's yeah. like, I mean, it's like what they're all about over there, apparently. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the Comité de Champagne asked for the destruction of a shipment of 2,352 cans on the grounds that the century old motto used by the American brewery, as we all know, Miller High Life, is the champagne of beers. Uh, that infringes on the protected designation of origin, Champagne. Uh, also, funny in this news story, it says related. Is Gruyere still Gruyere, even if it's from Door County? <laughs> Odd. Anyway, I just noticed that just now. They're big so, into champagne and cheese. What can you say? Yeah, yeah. apparently so. So anyway, what happened is uh, Miller was sending a bunch of beer to Germany. Somehow, it ended up in Belgium, and they have a statement later here. They asked Miller High Life, like, how did this happen? They asked Miller how this happened. They're like, we don't know. We don't even really know how this got into Belgium. It was supposed to go to Germany. Um, And then somehow in Belgium, the French committee found out about it, sent a request for, like, not extradition, but, like, I guess crush tradition, if that's a thing. To the Belgian like port authorities, crush tradition, and the people in Antwerp were like, "Oh yes, of course, of course, we will cr- we will destroy all these beers. These are not champagne regulated." So, on the request of the French, the Belgian destroyed two thousand cans of Miller High Life, the champagne of beer that was on its way to Germany. <laughs> Do you guys have any thoughts around this story other than French gonna French? Uh. <laughs> I've been to, quote unquote, the Champagne region. So, Ronce, that's like the world headquarters of the Champagne. It's like where they have the actual trade and set the prices and things of that of the Champagne uh, that you purchase. They are super, super strict on stuff. Like, they get offended when you call something Champagne. That's not Champagne. That is sparkling wine, mon ami. Yeah. So, uh, from their perspective, you know, just as if you're a, a brand and you want to protect your brand, I can see that, you know, being upset. But at the same time, like, we all know it's beer. Mm, it's Miller High Life. It's Miller High Life. Like, I mean, not like, trying to be I, bougie. I, I, I enjoy Miller High Same. Life. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'll order one of those at the back door all the time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's go out and have a Miller High Life somewhere. Um, I, Why? You what? know, I. it's just... It's one of those things that you kind of just shake your head at and be like, mm, that's kind of dumb. And the fact that they just destroyed it to me well, is like the most funny thing. Have a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Exactly. Why, why did the Belgians do it on behalf of the French? Because <laughs> I, I mean, that's a diplomacy. great question. Yeah, international diplomacy. Why didn't they just e- say send it to EU, Germany? <laughs> like, it's it's put the, the boat EU. back in the yeah. water, send it over a couple hundred miles and you'll be there. It's It's odd for sure. Um, you know, I, I was actually really um, interested with this Braxton or I'm sorry, the garage beer, garage beer can. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a little there's a couple arrows here that says mm-hmm. open this end, yeah, yeah pointing towards the the open end. Mm-hmm. But then there's a little thing on the on the bottom of that that says crush to recycle this way. Oh, yeah. So I'm just wondering, like, did, did the high life cans have a little crush this way symbol like are they actually that friendly for recycling you would hope so probably not the belgian probably just crushed them and threw in the ocean (laughs) sons of bitches they didn't didn't have the instructions i i feel like the europeans are pretty green friendly you know (laughs) hopefully Uh, got recycled yeah i would think that they would yeah hopefully they're just not high life friendly the only i went looking for like why the only thing we could really find is uh that from the article no matter how popular the slogan is in the united states it is incompatible with the European Union rules, which make clear that goods infringing a product's designation of origin can be treated as counterfeit. So the beer was destroyed on the grounds that it was counterfeit champagne, I is, guess. Isn't Germany in the EU? Well, yeah, I guess that's, I mean, that's, 
<laughs> it's all very, very bad. How many cans again? Tw- over 2,000. 2,300. It's uh, like, what? It's like a couple of pallets full, that's gonna, right? that's That could like 24 feed cans so many 16-year-olds. Times 100. <laughs> yeah, think <laughs> of the children. That was, that was about a pallet. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. honestly, send it to send it to somewhere they could use it. Um. Anyway, that's really all there is to say about the story. It was just so... Uh, so silly and so apropos for talking about like how silly a lot of the stuff around quote unquote big beer can be that it seemed like a fun thing to bring up in the context of this conversation. That, that explains why we can't get high life anywhere. Yeah. In Louisville right yeah. Now. <laughs> One pallet in Europe has caused a huge supply issue. It's a ripple effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a statement from uh, Miller Coors. They said, what the fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, he said... Uh, <laughs> That would have actually I mean, probably good. good. They the probably fuck, would have won a whole lot of people <laughs> over. Uh, they basically said they were, don't understand how this happened, but they remain proud of Miller High Life, its nickname, and its Milwaukee uh, provenance. Shout out Milwaukee. Yeah, we invite our friends in Europe to the U.S. anytime to drink a high life together. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. There you go. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Or crush them. Yeah, or, or to crush a high life. Yeah, maybe they just got it was lost in translation. Crush tradition. We, you crush high lives? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Apologies to all Belgian people. That's not what you sound like. <laughs> but you did destroy our beer, so maybe not. Speaking of global news, we did unveil the theming for Louisville Beer Week for 2023. We are happy to announce that we are going to go with a theme of globalization. Um, yeah. Louisville being a massive global city that sees a uh, the over, good kind of globalization. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got, what, over 60, 70 representatives of different nations across the world that immigrate here, uh, get a foothold. They make some incredible cuisine mm-hmm. and add a lot back to the Louisville culture in all the arts. Um, you know, I, I just think the contribution goes a long way. So um, our kickback is that we want to make sure beer's for everybody. So we're going to include the whole world in that. Yeah. There you go. Beer. beer. Beer is a beverage that's enjoyed around the world. Uh, so that's part of the theming of this year for this uh, beer week. Uh, it's the idea like, hey, I mean, there, there, you know, we have damn near 30 tap rooms across Jefferson County now in, in the 502 uh, area code. And, uh, you know, that that's for every single person to enjoy. Like, you don't have to be like an uh, like a hipster in Germantown to enjoy craft beer. Yeah. You can be anybody and enjoy craft beer. You can, you know, own a, a own an ethnic restaurant and have craft beer in in your spot if you choose to serve beer uh and likewise if you have a you know a food truck you can serve at most of the breweries here too and as we kind of have all gotten to know working on various projects and just getting to know the people at louisville's office for globalization louisville is among the like top we're we're a great refugee city in general uh, Kentucky is actually a great refugee state, like shout out refugee ministries and stuff like that. And we reap the benefits of that with all these like small, like so many of these restaurants that you see that are, do ethnic cuisine are just small businesses run a yeah. lot in many cases by families, uh, people who put their blood, sweat and tears into their business, just like craft breweries do. So this year for Louisville Beer Week, uh, Moeller said this tongue in cheek. I'm not sure if it's going to be the official slogan, but like celebrating multiculturalism. Uh, that might be rude. I'm not sure, but I kind of like it for Mul- now. Multi multiculturalism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in Louisville, Kentucky for it, Louisville Beer Week 2023. It's a double entendre. Yeah. That's yeah. also French. Yeah. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> I, huh. I think. I destroy think, it. I was going to say, did, did you destroy all of the beers <laughs> over there in Belgium? Yeah. Or No. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, but so, yeah, we we we're really looking forward to this specific theming for Beer Week. I think it's um it's it's a theming that the entire local community can can get behind, uh, and we're really excited to do it. Um, we're really excited to bring in uh, the office the office for Glo- globalization and uh, economic development here in Louisville uh, into the mix. Um, tourism like it's just going to be fun for everybody involved. So mark your calendars, October twentieth through the twenty seventh. We'll have our six. Annual beer Six week. Six annual. Six wow. annual Louisville Beer Week. We've Can't been doing this together that long. Good God. <laughs> yeah. I need a garage beer. That's some pretty far out planning by you guys. <laughs> we try and get ahead. We're trying. That's what we've learned and is getting that's it done a, early helps. Very impressive. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in a little sooner news, uh, we do have the Kentucky Guild of Brewers Craft Bash coming up on June 24th. That is uh, the de facto largest gathering of Kentucky breweries from all over the state, east, west, north, um, and south. And they'll all join together on the waterfront to have one big camaraderie festival. Um, 
it's huge. It's usually a lot of fun, a lot of good people. Uh, meet some folks that, you know, you, you don't want to, you don't have the opportunity to travel, you know, two, three hours yeah. to and try some really interesting beers. And then you get out of your little bubble of your neighborhood brewery, which is totally fine. But for that day, yeah, you got to try something yeah. new. Yeah. yeah, And Braxton will be there too, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll be there. I, I like, I love Hopkinsville. I don't, I don't get to go to Hopkinsville that much though. And Hopkinsville Brewery is making really good beer right now. And so the fact that Kate and company can can come over to Louisville and, and set up shop there on the waterfront, I'll take a beer from her. Yeah, I think absolutely. that's where I actually first met her and like got to talk to her. And she was talking about like her brewing school and stuff. And so many people from all like the people from Jarfly got to become friends with them there. Yeah. And like, I mean, you name it, you meet these people at Craft Bash and it's really fun. Paducah Beer Works. Coming yeah. In, you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's you don't get out that way very often. Yeah. So. And that's how that's that's part of the reason how Matt Watson got on this podcast a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good Solid. old Kentucky. Uh Zane, we really appreciate you coming on tonight. Um, is there anything coming up that you really like wanted people to know about? Something that you're really excited about, or even just, just like, you know, shows or movies that you're enjoying right now? You know, just follow Garage Beer at Drink Garage Beer. Um, you know, Braxton's <laughs> also gonna be pumping some some garage beer content through their stuff too. So follow those guys. Um, you know, we, we'll have some more stuff coming up. It's probably a couple months out to, you know, to be able to share that. Um, but just as far as shows that I'm watching right now, um, you know, succession, oh, you know, mind, I know, really? sorry, sorry, <laughs> succession, uh, uh, the wife is, is home on maternity leave. So she caught up on that. And so we were able to start this season. So that's been, uh, that's been good to watch that. Um, and then uh, we are all caught up on Barry, but have not watched uh, the last couple episodes. So we're planning good. on watching that. Is that the uh, show about the hitman with um, Bill? What's his name? Bill, yeah, Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, I've yep. seen only seen clips of that, but it looks like a freaking hilarious show. It's a riot. And Bill Hader is like the man. He's so funny. He's great. Yeah. It was uh, the uh, HBO, you know, sometimes they have some good content, you know, where it's... Uh, what was it? And I, was it and I love you, man? To where it was like I remember that movie. When it was like uh this is like Sunday night on HBO. There's some there's some <laughs> yeah, yeah, some yeah. meme or whatever. And it's like, no, that's that's serious. That's what we do. It's uh Succession, Barry, last week tonight. That's those three shows. Hell yeah. Yeah. So nice. David, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to plug um, float tanks. Um, if you've never gone and spent 90 minutes in total isolation with no lights, no sound, and no weight because you're floating in 300 pounds of Epsom salt, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, some people would argue it's panic inducing. I would argue it's the exact opposite. Um, you get in there, relax, uh, contemplate your thoughts for 90 minutes. Uh, that can be good or bad for a lot of you out there. But uh, for me, I find it really relaxing. There's a couple of places around town uh, that do that. Uh, my favorite is Weightless Float Center. So I went there this morning, and that's why I'm oh, chippy. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was wondering what that was about. Yeah, what that was like. David seems so calm. Man. We need to get those guys on sometime. That'd be fun. And yeah. French. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. John. I love how we think French people <laughs> laugh differently. But like, John, what do you got? Um, uh, I had something a second ago, and then I forgot it. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to actually just shout out Michelada season. Uh, if you guys want to do an entire episode where I just make micheladas for everybody, uh, leave a comment down in the YouTube comments and I'll force you guys to sit through one. Maybe we can get somebody from Zing Zang on or something. Anyway, if you want to drink your lager beer and like as we're talking about, be able to just kind of drink all day, stay responsible, uh, a michelada is another great way to do that. You get a little bit of Bloody Mary mix, you get a little bit of hot sauce, you get a little bit of maybe a dash of uh, Maggi seasoning, maybe some like uh, tahini, then you get some lager beer a little bit of salt you mix them all together so it's kind of like a bloody beer bloody mary beer but it's the perfect thing to just drink all day long sounds good ketchup yeah. beers yeah no that, no that's that's no. different no delicious uh i was gonna plug succession uh because Sorry. no it's all right uh because I, i'm really excited because i just actually started it i'm probably okay. five episodes into the first season right now and within like 30 minutes even sooner than that than in the first episode i was like that this is the show for me so i'm gonna get caught up rather quickly and embarrassingly is that the uh, one about like a family of billionaires or something like it's that? like if it's like if arrested development was serious maybe okay. like that's my vibe okay 
on it. Okay. Uh, I don't know, though. Uh, so I won't do that. Uh, we've been talking about uh, tennis. We've been talking about the French. Uh, so let me plug the French Open yep. uh, at the end of May, like yep. the last weekend of May and early June. Near Memorial Day. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, it's going to be fun, you know? It'll be fun. Carlos Alcaraz, the favorite to win that tournament. See, I'm, I see, I'm, I'm, I'm about two years out of the loop on like who's actually good these days. Uh, Nineteen year old Spaniard. So. Yeah, yeah. See, Ooh. we we're we're past the the goal. Oh, is age. he the guy who's like all over the internet? I think I've seen a bunch of like Maybe. pictures and memes about him. Maybe. Is he like the heartthrob of like tennis? Are you on Instagram? tennis TikTok? Lately? Well, I don't know. I've just I've seen some memes. Yeah, he's he's world number one, and he's like right funny now, so. and he's cool, and everybody loves him, and everybody like wants to like see if he would just hang out and drink a couple beers with but, him. Anyway. You know, we're, we're Pedro yeah. Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, him too. We're we're, we're we're out of the golden age of tennis, where we where we witness like the best players to ever play play against each other. Yeah. Uh, over a you know fifteen year period essentially. So I at this point i'm just like anybody can win well, yeah know. but if that kid's 19 True. there's a whole new generation coming oh absolutely it's gonna be yeah. fun to watch so yeah, yeah french open uh zane thank you so much for coming on yeah tonight. thank you guys beers, for having me uh glad i was able to share the story and hopefully uh uh educate some people on yeah. what's yeah. going on with garage beer and well if you guys see a little so. sales spike in louisville uh, especially goss avenue kroger there you uh, go thank, <laughs> thanks zane for doing this <laughs> yeah that's a lot of i'll insane. send you guys a thank you note yeah so. <laughs> coming to this podcast maybe a beer all right, cheers, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>